Hello everyone, I am author uh, Lauren A.R. Masterson, aka Alice Liddell, and today I am going to be reading my very first novel, Love of the Sea, published by Inksmith Publishing. Please enjoy. Prologue. The candle sputtered as Pamela opened the worn tome. The pages were curling, and the painted illustrations were smudged from curious fingers. She settled into the overstuffed chair next to the fire grate. Come on, then, Pamela patted her knee. It's time for a story. Cormac trotted over and lay on the woven rug. His chubby feet tapped the floor as he swung his legs up and down. Tell me about the mermaids again, Pamela. She chuckled and held up the book. Already ahead of you, dear. Long ago, the gods brought us life to the world and all the creators in it. Poseidon wanted to show the gods that he was the best creator, and so he made mer people in his own image. The other gods were so impressed by Poseidon's works that they crowned him king of the gods. One god was jealous and felt that he could form something better, but no matter how hard he tried, his creatures all melted back to mud. This god was Keteromenos, the cursed one. Realizing that he could not beat Poseidon, he chose to steal his creation instead. Keteromenos dove deep into the realm of the Mer people and tricked one of the tribes into coming on land. He coaxed them with the beauty of green trees and plentiful fauna to hunt. He helped mold their bodies so they could stay on land, producing the first humans. As a last affront to Poseidon, he gave them little seeds from the stars so they would one day pass on from their flesh and be immortal like the gods. Poseidon was furious when he discovered what Cateromenos had done. Unfortunately, the humans could not go back to the sea after living on land for so long nor were they willing to give up their new claim to immortality. As punishment, Poseidon cut the humans off from the wellspring, rendering them blind and dumb to magic. The Mer people wept for the loss of their kin, and soon the humans forgot about their former lives in the sea. For many years, the humans and the Mers fought, as the humans were filled with the false superiority that Cateromenos had poisoned them with. They believed themselves to be equal to the gods and that all the world was theirs for the taking. The land, the sea, the air, and all the things in it. The Mers would tear down their ships and eat the sailors, warning the humans to stay away from their watery kingdoms. Even Poseidon raised his hand on occasion to beat back the human ego, sending squalls that tore ships asunder and sent wailing sailors to the deep abyss. After a time, the Mer people were defeated, as the humans kept building larger and stronger ships. No longer could they pierce the hulls with their claws and rent the lumber to splinters. In fact, humans would sometimes catch the Mers, forcing them to grant wishes, or worse, curse them to a half-life found on land. Eventually, the humans turned away from the Cursed One, as his path only led to destruction and death. Those who found favor with Poseidon are able to wheedle tiny drops of magic from the ancient wellspring. Today, these are the practitioners of the White Veil vale and other shadowy clans who understand the ancient ties we rejected so long ago. Though never will humans again know the true might of the wellspring, as we are all stained with the sins of the Cursed One and seek the forgiveness of Poseidon and his pure waters of the sea. It is believed today that there are no mers left in the world, and if there are, the Poseidon has hidden them well. They say that if a human is able to shed his ego, relinquish his mortal soul, and enter the watery kingdoms in peace, that the curse will be broken, and humans and mers will be one people at peace once more. Pamela closed the book and set it aside. Cormac's eyes were wide as he came out of his childish imaginings. He curled himself into a sitting position and grabbed one of his toy wooden boats. I shall find the mer people, he declared, waving the boat in the air. I will be a great sailor someday and be the very first to find them. Pamela ruffled his hair. 
I'm sure you'll find all sorts of kingdoms and peoples when you grow up, lad. Cormac scowled at her teasing words. She drew him up by the elbow. His body was heavy and showing the first signs of cultish adolescence. To bed with you, she sighed as she steered him to the great four-poster. You can have more adventures tomorrow. He clambered up onto the bed, and Pamela pulled up the heavy quilts. Cormac rolled his eyes up to her. Don't worry, Pamela. I promise I'll visit and write you letters. Pamela's eyebrows rose. What on earth are you talking about? No, under the sea, Cormac laughed. When I find the Murs, I'll still visit you and write every day. She smiled and kissed his forehead. Dream of your Murs, lad, but be careful they don't gobble you up. Cormac nodded, a yawn escaping his lips. Good night, Pamela. Good night, lad. Chapter One Beyond the safe harbor of Paradigm, far below the trade routes of ships, lay the ancient kingdom of Murs. The reefs glittered with glimpses of their shimmering scales, teasing sailors and dredging up the old stories. One such Mur was the fierce Azrae, cloaked in crimson scales and scarlet hair. She lived in the reef just beyond the safe waters of Paradine's fishing shoals. Her mentor and only companion, Ileana, the sea hag, drilled her above the rainbow of corals. She sought to mold Azrae, the daughter of a great ruler, into the great hag she was destined to be. Their booming water pulses had sent all the fish into hiding and made the waters choppy for sailors above. Again, the sea hag whipped her comb sending a small water pulse to smack Azrae on the cheek. Azrae beat her tail hard, her body growing weary. She used the glare of the high afternoon sun to reflect light off her scales and temporarily blind her opponent. When lit, she resembled a burning ember suspended in water. Azrae waited until the sea hag flinched and darted her eyes away before performing the swift dive. Not enough power! Another water pole smacked Azrae, preventing her from completing the dive bomb. The sea hag shook her head. Let us break for food. You are clearly growing tired. The sea hag settled on a brain coral, waiting for crabs to scuttle within reach. Azrae took deep breaths and slid her comb back into her hair. She flicked her tail as she lounged on a large sponge. The sea hag twirled her comb between her fingers. There are no second chances in Drom. She pointed the comb at Azrae. Each move must be performed with precision. Arrows on your part can mean death. Azrae shook her head and snipped some brown seaweed with her claws. Yes, I know, Eliana. I am all that is left for Sulu. I cannot lose. We train every day. I am more than ready to take what is mine. Indeed. The sea hag shifted on the coral and settled her gaze on Azrae. We cannot wait any longer. The time has come for you to reclaim your title. The water is becoming warmer again, Azrae mused, allowing the tide to push her hand in the gentle current. The sea hag nodded. Yes, signaling the beginning of a new season. The season you are at last a grown myrrh. We must find you a mate so you can return to Sulu. There is a small tribe not far from here, only a day's swim. I have already found a suitable mate. It is a matter of winning him. Azrae rolled onto her stomach. The sea hag rubbed her forehead. Oh, my child, you have never even met another myrrh. Azrae snared a parrotfish with her claws, ignoring the sea hag's plea. I am certain. He is the one who will expand my wellspring tenfold. I cannot return to Sulu alone, and I need more than a common myrrh to unlock my true magic. Not this sailor prince business again. The sea hag rolled her eyes. You must rule with a myrrh at your side, or have you forgotten who you are? She drew herself up, glaring at the sea hag. Never. Thank you so much for reading along with me. I hope you enjoyed Love of the Sea. It's available on Amazon in hardcover, softcover, and as an ebook. One of my current projects is I'm going to be converting this into an audiobook for your listening pleasure. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.